in fact, there were certain pictures of some voters card bearing those pictures. And you're wondering. You could see. Who, who, who on earth registered these people? Mm. But you see, politicians um, will, will find accomplices even within, say, INEC, for example. Mm. Because politicians did not register these people. Mm. INEC did. That's right. So there are accomplices who have helped to make that happen. So what INEC is saying is that they at number one, INEC is admitting that they are aware of this problem. There are actually child voters that have been registered mm. and that they will not allow them to be able to vote. How they are able to do that on voting days is what we're not exactly sure of. I know that there are meant to be policemen at the PUs. Mm. Will it be part of the briefs of the, of the policemen to arrest these child voters? Uh, depending on where this child voting is taking place, um, who who is how how is exactly is what INEC is saying going to be carried out at implementation? Hmm. That is my concern. Hmm. But as to the intention, the mindset that look, if you show your face there, we will arrest you, we will arrest your parent. That is a fantastic uh, uh, mindset. That is how it should be. Okay. Assume. I mean, you, you are already admitted that. Some of these people have been registered. But mm. don't show up. Don't come and vote. We will get you arrested. Fine. But how d- is going to be done on an election day mm. is left to be seen. Uh, so, so we, in, in other words, especially in those areas um, where the underage voting is, is um, um, known to have been taking place either in the past or we're looking you know, at this thing still repeating itself, nothing significant uh may not happen in terms of curbing on the rich voting uh because you ask yourself the forces that made it happen in the first instance yeah. um because those kind of forces will also include the, those communities themselves that's right uh-huh. that's right so uh have we dealt with that i don't know on on the side of INEC, INEC will have done some um you know scanning through their database to see some of this children uh, child voters yeah. know exactly uh, some of the polling booths that are involved and probably um deploy uh, you know this arrest mechanism to those PUs. i don't know exactly but i'm just saying that at implementation it might be a bit more tricky uh, than, than what we're saying because those communities yeah are involved in what happened and um sadly also um stakeholders have said that sadly the uh, Beaver's machine can't identify pictures. It can't identify. No, no, no. It goes for your um, thumbprints, um, age, and your iris. It yeah. doesn't. It, 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 just, it, it doesn't has know no whether you're, you're young or you're old. Yeah. It, it doesn't have that capacity, sadly enough. And I'm just hoping that you know this would um, deter people from um, doing this. Let's go to the New Telegraph. Obasanjo attacking leaders out of frustration. The presidency. We're having this conversation at nine. <laughs> well, let's deal. Let's deal um, a little bit with it this morning. Oh, well, okay. I, I think it's, it's a mixed bag. This is not the first time of you know we're having these letters. He wrote to uh, Jonathan. He wrote to uh, Buhari. Uh, he's writing again. So he, he, he writes all these letters from, from time to time. Mm. Uh, this is also a very lengthy one. Uh, some of those earlier yeah. letters were yeah. not as long as what we see. However, I don't think that... Um, uh, the, the the letter is uh, should be strange as far as the content is concerned, or that the endorsement is uh, is coming out of the blues. I don't think so, mm-hmm. because where OBJ leans as far as which candidate is supporting had been clear for several months. Mm-hmm. So this to me is like what well, like 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 they say, um, putting it in black and white form formality mm. you know th- that's essentially what it is uh, anybody who has been a keen political watcher knows exactly where obasan just stand as far as the choice of candidates in yeah. this election is concerned so someone said that mm. baba should have just um you know stayed on the sidelines and not endorse anybody yeah. like um other um statesmen who have been relatively okay so you can come for blessings, but then there won't be any public endorsement. What's that's that's not in his, on, in his character. That is not in his character. Well, he sh- sh- been, should, he, should he have been like that, though? I, I I found it a bit strange. Typically, when people are of uh, his status, uh, there are certain expectations that they are just at the background. Uh, advisory, generally, yeah. you know, and, 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 you know. 
But for him as a pastor, that is his personality. He's not contented with staying at the background. He wants to be part of it. You know, uh, maybe we should leave the discussion till the till nine. nine uh, okay, <laughs> let's leave it to nine. Uh, we, we're gonna pick this one here. Bolanli Rahim, Lagos CP, direct replacement of all policemen in Aja division. Yeah, well, uh, it, it, as it, what, what I found strange about this report is uh, is being is being presented as a routine. Um, I, I I don't think it is routine. We all know what has happened with that particular police station. Yeah. And that might have been the trigger for what is going on. There's nothing wrong if something uh, is not going well in a particular station. And the CP decided to take a decision to say, you know, take these people out of the place. Scatter the whatever they might have uh, built hmm. o- over a period. Scatter it. And, 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 you know, disperse these people. It is possible. Uh, there are people who are also saying, uh, is that what should be done? The question is that it is the finger that erred that should be caught. Hmm. So, it is not to say that because uh, a Vandy was involved in the killing, that therefore everybody in that station is a criminal and should be treated like a Vandy. I don't think that is how it goes. Hmm. However, what has happened with Vandy, uh, which was said to be a repeat of an earlier one in which somebody else was killed, hmm. we should be able to have a thorough investigation because... While Vandy is the one that uh, is in the eye of the storm right now, yeah. there might have been other guys in that same station who have committed evil. Mm. And the investigation will reveal that and ensure that whoever those people are, if they have committed evil by virtue of investigation, the answer should not be just posting out of the station. Mm. They should be made to answer to their own evil. Right. As simple as that. Right. Uh, uh, some have also said that, you know, whether those the um, police personnel at the Ajiwe uh, police station, whether they are corporate or not, putting them out um, somewhere else is just um, uh, a smoke screen of some sort. It doesn't change the orientation of these policemen. It's just yes. moving them to another place to go and, if they are like that, in court, do the same thing in other places. You see... My my take is that Nigeria deserves the police that it has. What the police as an institution needs is not cosmetic. It is not window dressing. It is not, oh, they say they're not well uh, rewarded. Okay, give them 13000 on top. That is not the kind of reform that that institution needs. Yeah. The problem with the institution starts right from who gets into the police. Who do we even employ as police officers? Mm. Then he goes into things like the reward system. How are they rewarded? He goes into training. What kind of training do we expose them to? Hmm. Now, if we don't fix all those fundamental issues, then we deserve what we get. It is the the issue of you post them, the issue of, uh, oh, there was a protest, and then, uh, of course, it is now glaring that the a core a core issue with answers is not uh, it has not been achieved as effectively as as we we think it was or we thought it, 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 it was addressed it wasn't mm-hmm. police brutality if you can have two killings in a matter of weeks by one station one police station i mean that's that's alarming so it tells you that the police scary. brutality is right here with us so what have we achieved we must go to the root of the it it, it is more what we need is more fundamental, it's much deeper, it's more systemic hmm. for the Nigerian police than all these ephemeral things. What we're doing right now is still a huge joke. We have not done anything. Mm, indeed. Mm. 7.42, let's go to The Guardian. We're going to start, uh, We're going to drop the new telegraph. Let's speak of The Guardian. The Guardian has this banner here that's really interesting. I think we started with this off-air. Uh, our new Year, high stakes for subsidy, inflation, insecurity. We're talking off-air about uh, how the country can fare economically in in 2023 um for me i would like to divide 2023 uh into two or let's even look at it from the global side first um so we come with we look at global and domestic on the global side the world is in turmoil very serious turmoil economics economies are upside down um and because nigeria is not isolated in the from the global community it is going to take its own share of mm-hmm. that global problem the russia and ukraine one is not about to go down 
yesterday there were still 63 Russian soldiers that were killed. That's right. Though according to another report, it was well over 400 soldiers oh. of Russian that were oh. killed. Oh. So when 400 soldiers of Russian are killed, Putin is not going to be excited about mm. it. So there is no sight for that war. Mm. There's no end to, to, to that war in sight at all. Apart from that, you see Japan in 40-year time inflation. America, 30-year. Germany, 20-year. UK is even thinking it might go into depression. Mm. IMF in the report this morning is saying about one-third of the world economies will go into recession mm. in 2023. That's right. So from a global perspective, it is extremely messy. Mm. Now, for a Nigeria that is dependent mm. even for food, a chunk of his food consumption uh, on that global world the effects will be felt so when we do all those our imports we will also be importing part of those global crises into the economy we'll be importing inflation into the economy so that is there we don't we're not energy suf sufficient hmm. we can't even process our own crude well hopefully in 2023 that will change if it changes it will have a positive effect on this economy mm. otherwise as uh, russia oil is being banned yeah and there is crisis in the energy system globally mm. it will also trickle down here because we go out there to go and import the fuel that we consume in this country then on the domestic side of things i would divide it into two you have the first part which is from now up until may then you have may until the end of the year mm -hmm. i think the first half is going to be relatively placid the, the the focus is going to be on the on the election and and there will not be so much happening on the economic side of things mm -hmm. yeah the outgoing president is in that mood is in that i'm about to go i'm about to leave kind of a mode so that, that may not be. but after that depending on the choices we make or on the choice we eventually make for the president if the president comes in and he starts to take more steps in the right direction. Mm. The entire world will respond positively. Even before we start to see the actual result of those steps that are taken. Mm. Just the steps in the right direction. Mm. So, it's neither here nor there. We, we have to wait and see how, how, how it plays out for mm. us, Nigeria. All right. Okay, then. Um, well, in this report, um, the Guardian says, we scarcity may worsen over future of subsidy ban on russian crude um some of the some of the contestants presenters are saying that they will remove fair subsidy do you see that happening in 2023 it is possible um how you do it is a different story so the the uh, one thing i mean i have been an advocate of um uh, removal of fuel subsidy how it is handled the how the devil is in the detail how right. do you want to do it there are genuine concerns about the fact that you remove this fuel subsidy and then we can still not benefit from the effect of the savings. That is a genuine concern. So whoever is going to remove it must be able to convince the people that, look, hmm. while there might be a pinch on the left, this is where you're going to get the comfort. There is a bam on the right that I'm providing to cushion it. And there must be the integrity to do that. In an industry where integrity is a little bit low, for example, look at the ongoing fuel subsidy. Mm -hmm. Up till now, there was a time somebody even said, oh, it was the road that they are doing in Napapa. <laughs> <laughs> that was the reason for for for, for this false scarcity. <laughs> now they've moved on to oh, let's chase on these uh, stations that are selling. It is the stations that are the problem, you know. So the the, the honesty has to be there, yeah. um, and and that is how to, uh, you know, cut the support of the mm. people to make it happen. Will it be once? Will it be in phases? We don't know. How will? The fact that the Dangote refinery is coming into the market, how will it play out on the issue of first sub removal as well? Mm. Those things are, are, are there. But for me, it has to be removed. The, 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 the real question is how? Mm. And that's a big, big question with some gigantic question mark. Because mm. uh, if we, without the how, I don't think Nigeria would welcome, Nigerians will welcome the overall subsidy like you have said. Like So this is the pinch, this is the bomb this yes. you know that kind of thing okay. uh let's t take the vanguard now uh mfla sack dss dg now southern middle belt leaders tell buhari what do you think is happening between uh, <laughs> mfla and uh, uh bichi well i th i think there have been certain intervention you see this for me the recent policy direction of the cbn 
has affected some politicians and they are fighting tooth and nail mm. to deal with that matter. Mm. Um, unfortunately, uh, the CBN, you know, they might have files on, on, on the MFL himself and all the rest. That's DSS now? Yes, of course. Mm. They, they tend to keep file dozier for, for, for everybody. Mm. And when they need to pinch you, they can pull up files and, mm. and deal with that. But what we as Nigerians, in my opinion, must do is to ensure that those cashless policies are not hijacked by the politicians mm -hmm. and by virtue of the way they want things to be thrown out if we throw it out we're still going to be back on this table we've mm -hmm. had a better tempo on cashless cashless uh, 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 policy before we jettisoned it we are coming back to it mm -hmm. and then on the part of the cbn where are the glitches here and there mm -hmm. are the system robust enough to ensure that for example People can't even get this new note, but some dealers are already I, selling I, I, it in I, the market. I was coming to that, but please go on. <laughs> please go on. So, if people cannot get the new note, but there are people who are already selling it at parties, those are questions that CBN needs to tell us, answer it for us. The C, between the CBN and the banks, somebody is just playing games and making money out of out of after what uh, 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 the policy is supposed to achieve. So, issues of uh, failed transactions. And, and all of that, how do we deal with that? Issues of uh, the PO, I think the POS revision has happened anyway. Yes. From 100,000 to 500,000. That's right. Those are the things that CBN on the side will need to deal with. But mm. don't allow the politicians to hijack this policy and say, we sh some have even said we should move it to June. <laughs> <laughs> do you think CBN is trying to run ahead of its shadows, though? Because uh, the deadline is very near. But yet, the ATMs are still dispensing the old notes. Um, personally, I haven't, I haven't received any new notes from the ATMs that I've, that I've used, mm. you know, thus far. And you, you have said rightly, these monies, these new notes are, can be seen almost at all the parties that you'd, you'd, you'd find, in, party venues that you find in Lagos every weekend. Just try and, you know, go to any party venue, just crash a party and see you know how in abundance you see these new notes but then go to your nearest atms and then you you find that out of like eight atm maybe one or two will be dispensing you know if at all any will be dispensing it In incidentally all the people that are involved um in enforcing our laws they yeah. also go to these parties mm -hmm. including cbn people they go party Policemen who are supposed to arrest people, they go to the same parties. They see all these things. What, is, what, is, what is the role of the banks? I mean, this is not on CBN now, to be honest. But because the CBN does not give this cash to um, the, the, what do they call them now? So the sellers. The sellers of the, oh, yeah, the, whatever oh, it is, you know, directly. So they must, have, they must have had access to those notes from their banks. So yeah. what, what is the role of the banks here? I, I will think we actually need to investigate before we can conclude what is the source of this note that these people are getting. Um, if, we, if, we, if we investigate that, then we probably will be able to expose what is going on hmm. and then call the responsibility agencies of government to take the actions. They, they go they all Sorry about that, Balao. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's, let's move on to the Nation newspaper very quickly. Apologies to those watching online. Sincere apologies. Uh, let me take this story here from the Nation newspaper. And this is, uh, this uh, Basson just letter is. <laughs> it's almost on every front page. Everywhere. Right? We'll yeah. deal with it um, very well at 9 o'clock on Daily Digest. So please uh, bear with us. We're going to talk about this COVID issue, Balao. Uh, the world is trying to do one or two things because China is about to open their airport and all of that so for their citizens to start, you know, traveling out. Nigeria, have you heard anything concerning travel advisory into Nigeria? Not yet. As a matter of fact, uh, a couple of weeks ago, Nigeria actually removed all the um, yeah the protocols barriers, and all the that. protocols around mm -hmm. it, um, which is what several nations across the world have also done mm -hmm. anyway. So. For me, if you, if, if you look at the predictions about the global economy, um, mention of China was also made. And one of the reasons why China kept featuring on, 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 the, on the slump side of things is because of COVID. 
there have been instances in which provinces or cities or you know have to be shut down that's right in china people locked in their homes people with locked iron in bars homes. and all if of i go worse that at some point there were protests mm-hmm. by mm-hmm. chinese saying that's look right. this is enough. enough we just want to work mm. you know so it is something that the entire world is watching mm. so the question will be hopefully nigeria is also watching that space mm. There are decisions being made as to, okay, if people are coming in from China into your country, what should you demand? Mm. At least maybe a report that says you're negative or something. I, I, right. I don't know. Right. But the, our own uh, NCDC and the uh, right agency of government need to be on top of this. Mm. We cannot say that, you know, because the last time, um, it didn't affect Africa as bad as it was predicted. Mm. We don't even know what this variant will look like. We don't know what the effects will be. Mm. There has not been much changes in our healthcare system to say that if we get, uh, you know, a, a, a barrage of this thing now, that we are now we'll able, to able to deal to with it. it. Mm. Even our vaccination status is not as high as it could be. Mm. So the authorities need to be on top of what is going on here. Look at what other countries are doing. Yeah. Take a decision that will protect Nigeria from COVID-19. We don't want that repeat of 2020 in this country. Yeah, we shouldn't be there. Um, Daily Trust has um, a story that we just talked about, about scarcity of new Naira notes. That it, it's, it worries Nigeria. It says scarcity of new Naira notes worries Nigerians. Most ATMs dispensing old notes. Hawkers of new notes making brisk business. It's right here in Daily Trust, so we'll not touch it again. <laughs> uh, um, let's, I mean, and they put the picture of um, the new Naira notes and Gordon Mifili on their page, in the front page as well. Quite an interesting read. If you'd like to pick it up, you can pick it up. But the, well, let's talk about electricity. Discos earned 1.3 trillion Naira from electricity bills in 23 uh, months. This, this to me, a lot of people will think this is a lot of money, right? But looking at power sector and what we've been able to experience, let's put it that way. Um, for the year 2022, 2021, would you say it's a, it's, there's progress in that sector? Um, I mean, the other day they said they're going to distribute about 6 million, uh, what's it called? Meters. Meters. Mm. It, you see, we the, the foundation was very weak uh, for this course, uh, because we didn't, um, we didn't sell to the right consortium when we did this thing. It was sold to friends and cronies. Mm. Uh, so a lot of them could not even stand on their feet. Um, but people borrowed money. I mean, this discos borrowed money. They, a lot of them did not have their money. Yeah. They couldn't raise money to invest. In fact, one of the reasons why the federal government had to take up the issue of metering was that the discos could not even afford it. Nobody was willing to give them money That's right. in the market. So all these big numbers being said, oh, they earned this. Why not let's drill down to the profit? So how much did they make in profit mm-hmm. at the end? Mm-hmm. Because the top line and the bottom line are what we need to consider. Right. So what i think may be in the positive direction is the fact that we are now trying to focus on the weakest link in that chain which is the transmission Hmm. with what we have had is a situation in which there is the generation so much there is the uh, distribution so much and there's a huge gap between what we're able to generate today and what we can distribute Mm -hmm. and the weakest link when they say oh the whatever the grid has collapsed Mm -hmm. it is that transmission Mm -hmm. so the cement thing is set to be in progress there were viral videos about all those huge huge stuff Mm -hmm. how soon we can finish that project yeah and optimize the system because that is the actually next step that we need to do mm-hmm. optimize that system so that as much as possible of what is being generated mm-hmm. can reach the final consumer and we can bolster what the final consumer gets before mm-hmm. we now start start talking of you know scaling up right there is still the issue of mito uh, the multi year tariff order order and how we have to price electricity appropriately if we are going to get the right level of investment coming mm-hmm. to that place. Mm-hmm. Um, we've not dealt with that matter. But let there be an optimization first. Okay. And then we can sit down and have 
uh, a discussion around uh, uh, the effectiveness of MITRE and implementation. It's a good place to stop um, this morning on um, Daily today. Bolawa, thank you so, for, 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 so much for coming. Well, for Bolawa is back at nine. We'll talk about the presidency's reaction to our passengers' letter. We'll look at our passengers' letter you know in in full and uh, your reactions also will be welcomed at on daily's uh, daily digest with jimmy Sue. that's coming out at nine o'clock in the meantime we have the news for you after the news we'll talk to INEC on pvc collection and we'd like to hear your experience as well um since you've started trying to get your pvc if you've got your pvc if you've received yours we'd like to hear your thought and um, how the process um, went uh when you went for yours let go stay with us we'll be back I want to assume that you would run because I want to give the listeners context for the conversation. In 2019, you were running late to um, Atiku Abubakar. What did you learn then that you will not repeat this time? Yes, when is the president coming out to address us? There's a few things. One, I have a burden and a passion for young people. The fact that you have elected a man does not mean then you begin to order him around. The president will do whatever is good for the country at any given time. Mr. Adeshino, isn't the president responsible to the people? What should the next president do to root out stakeholders who are complicit? You fire them. Those that need to be fired, they're fired. It's looking like a brand new Chelsea attacking with so much fluidity. And what can you say about that, Martin? I know you follow Chelsea quite closely. I live close to the Chelsea training ground. That's what you mean by that. I'm not <laughs> a Chelsea.